Shoot. I hate that. But anyway, um, I don't remember what I was saying, so I might as well go on something else. What was it? Um, this is part of the symptoms that you have. You lose memory. You lose train of thought. And it's not easy. Because you want to try to get things across and then you have to stop and try to put it back together. That's why I write a lot of stuff down anyway. But I never spoil my kids. For the simple fact is, I was never spoiled. And at the same time, I had two different types of parenting. Well, four different types of parenting going on. And neither one was never good enough. It was like I was constantly having to, having to change up who I was according to which parent I was around. To be honest, they all played me. You want the truth about it? To be honest, they all played me as a child. Why do I say this? Because I never got a chance to be myself around none of them. Now my dad, both dads are dead. Both moms are living. But they all play me. When I was around my mother, the one that I call mother, the 89-year-old, I had to play to be a super Christian. Heck, I didn't even know what a Christian was. I had to play to be holier than that. Smarter than I actually was. I faked being smart a lot of times. A lot of times I really didn't know what I was talking about. But it sounded like I did. Around my mother, I had to play the type that was down to earth. Um, What you need, I got you. Um, I had to be a mother to my mother. You know, my biological mom. So that was all screwed up. And then around my biological dad... He needed help with everything, so I kind of felt like a mom to him, too. Um, He was the type that didn't want to upset me, didn't want me to be bothered, but, but yet, because he would come around so many times and have so many stories, I was still bothered because he was reliving his childhood, and I never knew what that junk was. And he had so many stories that was all about him being a failure and stuff like that, that I felt sorry for him. So when he was around, I had to sometimes pretend like I felt sorry for him. But reality was, in my mind, I was thinking, dude, you can do better any moment. (laughs) That's how I was feeling in my mind. And around my um, dad that I lost, that I was really close to, um... When he would come around, I was just like, I didn't want to seem dumb around him. So I would just, you know, um, I would, um, what do you call it? I would fake being a know-it-all. I would um, try to make sure my home was comfortable to his liking, to his standard. For each one of them, I had to keep changing my home, depending on when they come in and stuff. If my mom came, I had to pretend like I was cleaning up or like I was getting ready to to clean up. I had to keep faking stuff, y'all. I'm telling you, it was the most. (laughs) When my dad come, I had to pretend like I was really into Sanford and Son, which I did like Sanford and Son. I just didn't like it every day. Had to sit there and pretend like the house was perfect and my life was perfect and that there was no issues going on. All my bills were paid on time because that's who he was. He paid all his bills on time. When the biological parents came through, I had to pretend like I could drink more than anybody. Had to act like I could hold my liquor and all that stuff. 
became an alcoholic up under them at a young age. That was their world. So as I'm talking, I'm like, where am I at today? Today, I'm at finding me. At finding me, and I found that. Come to find out, I'm nothing like none of them. I have some traits of them because those are the ones that was in my life, but reality is, <laughs> I don't want to play with God. I don't want to pretend like I'm saved one minute and then when I get home, it's take the mask off. I don't, the person I, I am now, I don't have to take this mask off for anybody because it's not a mask. It was hot standing out there, y'all. I had to do something. Moving these doors and windows. But I don't have a mask to take off now. And I guess this is where the pain hurts. This is where it's all beginning to line up. These are just the fruit of the pieces that are coming together. And I can't speak for my sisters and brothers, but I know for me... This is very damaging. Some of the things that, um, in PTSD, I've had PTSD before, but not to this magnitude where, like, literally, I see things that happened to me when I was a child, and I know the things that I'm seeing is true because I always spoke about it when I was drinking. Um, different molestations, oh. Uh, different beatings and stuff. I see all of that in the PTSD, but I didn't start having the PTSD until I almost got burned up in May. And that's when, like, it really hit. Now, I know the things I went through with my son, you know, it was a handful. It was more than a handful. Who am I saying? It was more than a handful. It almost took my life, too. But to actually physically be underneath fire... You know, and seeing fire over your head while you sleep, you know, that took me to a whole whole level. Took me to a whole level. Whole nother level. And um, it took me to a whole nother level. And since that day, I have not been the same. I have not been the same. And it's like, it's very hurtful. To see some of the things that I'm seeing. And to relive this nightmare over and over. I had a nightmare yesterday around 4 o'clock. I was asleep and... Oh my God, it was so much. I saw dead folks. I saw living folks. I saw folks taken from folks. I saw everybody trying to make me them. That's what I saw. So I'm asking the Lord to, to make me who He wants me to be. And that... um you know, I don't have to change who I am to fit into other folks' lives or environments. If I lose friends, I just got to lose friends. There will be new ones that will come and accept me for who I am. Because I did lose a lot of friends. I'm telling you, it's up. <laughs> I picked the wrong time to come up here and sit, though. And leave this door because it's hot up here. I'm telling you, it's hot. But yeah, now I'm at the point now I see where this is going. This is uh this is God's way of maturing me. You know, we could be physically developed and not emotionally developed. And I thought for some time that I do act childish whenever things don't go my way. I, I do find myself acting like that seven year old. Or that eight-year-old that I was um, when I was younger. And I always wondered, why is that? Why do I got to act like that? But now I know why. Because there are some parents who will not let you grow up emotionally so that they can continue to cr control your every move. It's not that um, you was a bad child or anything. And it's not that you deserve to be done like that. But some parents out here, frankly, do not care. That they are hurting you 
because they can't feel anything because of what they went through. And that's that's where I'm at now is trying to get off and um every year I made sure from since the, I felt like I was doing a good thing because in my heart I am a giver and in my heart that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to give to them because I could see the things they had need of and even though they had need of it they were so prideful they wouldn't accept nothing for me. So I got where I would just get my mom flowers. One year I took flowers in there. What you go get me flowers for? Don't you see all them flowers outside? I got enough of flowers around here. I'm like, okay, okay, you don't know, chill out, chill out. You don't gotta, gotta act like that. But you know, I went back home feeling bad. My moms, they complain about food. I cook. I, y'all listen, when I tell y'all, I do restaurant style cooking when I cook. I cook buffet styles all the time. I was the, uh, the main person that held our family together by, um, and I did all this cooking, you know, I would teach my daughter, my sisters, you know, did all this cooking by hand myself because I always wanted to keep the family together. But now I'm like, the hell with it, you know, that's how I am now. I mean, they wore me out so bad. <laughs> but um, what I did was, what I did was um, I cooked all the time. Um, for Thanksgiving and Christmas, I did big dinners. I fed everybody. Never asked them for one dime to chip in or anything. And it seems like every time I would take my mom something to eat, she complained. When she come to my house, they complained. Both of them did. Matter of fact, my biological mom did not like coming in my house. I can count on my hand how many times my biological mom has been in my house this year. She'd rather sit out there in the hot sun and get sick than to step foot into my home because she's prideful. Because she's prideful. She'll go to church and let others help her in the door. But if I go reach my hand up in there to try to help her in the door, she snatches her hand back. I don't need your help. And then people look at me and my sisters like we're crazy. They're, they're like, why y'all don't help y'all mama? Can't y'all get y'all mama this, get her that? Oh, you don't know my story. You don't know how many times we have tried to help. We never stopped trying to help our mothers. They just rejected us in public and in private. It, they, they don't, they're not hiding who they are. It's that people are looking past who they are to find an excuse to say something negative to the children. So... <sighs> When I tell you, it's a handful. But my mothers, if I take them something to eat, right now, I could go to this house and cook a full meal that I know that they like. Cook all their favorite foods. And if I take it to them, let me get this fuss out, y'all, because I feel better letting this stuff out. If I take it to them, what they going to do is look at my brother and say, here, take this. You hungry, boy? And give it to him. So you see what I'm saying? Nothing that I ever would do or my sisters ever would do or my children or my nieces and nephew ever would do will ever be good enough for them. Because they so prideful and stuck up in their ways that, you know, we, we just don't have any value for them. We are objects to them. You know, I had to study so much and learn so much. Lord, why am I feeling like this? I got the scripture. I got the word of God in my heart. Now I need to have some understanding as to why I am like this. Why am I still holding back instead of going forth? I've done some great things out here in this world to make this world a better place. Not without the help of God. Not without the help of God. Not without giving God the credit for everything that he has allowed me to do. To do, And yet, despite how great of things that I've done, um, despite what people have came and told my mom about the things that I have done, she still looked at me and was like, um, well, that ain't nothing there. You, you ought to go back to Hitler's time and, and stuff like that, you know. So there comes a time when you got to to admit, I think that's where I'm at. I got to break this tradition. 
if there's anything